Hey everybody, today we're going to be making a knife sheath. In particular, we're going to be making a fold over knife sheath with a large tech lock. We're going to be making this one for a combat survivor, but this will work with any other type of knife as well. So follow along as we build this sheath. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to tape the blade. And now the purpose of taping the blade here is not necessarily to protect your fingers. Uh, this is actually because a couple of layers of blue tape on each side of the blade will give us that small amount of space so that when we actually press this in between our kydex, it gives just a little bit of wiggle room for that blade. You don't want the kydex pressed all the way tied up against the blade because you'd have an extremely difficult time uh, getting the knife in and out of your finished sheet. So a couple of pieces is all it takes. So as you see on this one, what we did is we put the tape on both sides and then you want to trim it super close to the blade because uh, we, we don't want a lot of excess tape in there or that will create some lumps when we finish our sheath uh, or it will create loose spots in there and it'll just make the sheath look bad and, and the knife won't fit well. Now we're going to take our Desert Fox and uh, we're just laying the blade on it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more in. In other words, you're going to have more of the tang laying onto the blade uh, than what you might necessarily use. And then you're going to give it about an inch outside the tip of the blade to be sure and mark it. Uh, as we lay the blade down and we simply roll it up, uh, all we're doing there is getting a, a rough measurement for how much plastic we need. Uh, and then again, we're giving it you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch uh, is about what you need. If you use a little bit more, it's fine. Uh, you'll just have a little bit more waste to trim off when you're done. The important thing is, is to make sure that you've got enough plastic uh, to allow for you to be able to make this sheet. You also have to realize that when you heat the plastic, uh, Kydex, Holstex, Bolteron, all of it tends to shrink slightly in one direction and grow slightly in the other. This is just the nature of the way that the plastic is, uh, the way that it is extruded initially. Um, so don't let that bother you. Just make sure that you've got enough room on each side. Next thing we're going to do here is we're just going to score along one of our lines. This doesn't require a lot of pressure. Um, just a fair amount. You want to clearly see the mark in the plastic. Uh, we definitely recommend that you use a square so that you get a nice straight line. As you can see, it's not exactly perfect right on the line. Again, that doesn't matter because remember, we gave ourselves extra to make sure that we have plenty of room to make our sheet. There are a couple of ways for you to heat the plastic. Uh, really, the best way is to buy something like a t-shirt press because you get a nice even heat on uh, across the plastic. Uh, however, they tend to be a little bit on the expensive side. So if you're wanting to stay a little bit less expensive, you can go and just go to just about any store and buy a toaster oven. Uh, do not use 
a toaster oven that you have at home if you're gonna cook in it. Once you heat plastic in the toaster oven, never, ever, ever, ever put food in it again. Uh, but this is the most basic, least expensive way to heat your, your Kydex, and it will work. It will work. The important thing is to make sure that you get your temperature right, and really more important than the temperature uh, is simply to make sure that over the edge, if you're using this, over the edge of the, of the rack, is that it just folds down nicely. Once it's folding down nicely, it's about the right temperature. Uh, you can be on this thermoplastic anywhere from probably 325 to 360 degrees and you'll be fine. Once you take it out, you need to move fairly quickly uh, because you don't want it to cool off before you get it around the blade. Center your blade in it, fold it over, and then you can simply put it right into your press. Push down very tight on your press and then just put your chain in and you're going to let it sit to cool. Uh, you can let it sit 10, maybe 15 minutes is good. All right, so the press that we're using in this particular video is our Master Series 8 by 12 inch press. That press also comes in a 8 by 24 inch press if you're doing bigger types of projects. We offer three different phones. Think of it as good, better, best. We have Max, Mega, and Extreme. Now sometimes you wonder, what's the difference? What am I getting uh, at the different price levels? Uh, primarily what you're getting is a denser material. So you're gonna get a little bit better definition when you form your sheath or your holster. And the second thing that you're gonna get is more longevity. So yes, you're gonna pay more for the Extreme phone, but you're gonna get many, many more presses out of it than you do out of the Max phone. So when you're looking at maybe just starting out, go ahead and try the Max. Maybe you're only planning to make a few holsters or a few sheets. As you move further along though, and you decide, hey, this is something I'm enjoying doing. I either wanna move to the next level in my hobby, or I'm gonna make this a business, then we definitely recommend that you move up to the extreme phone. And then when you take it out, your Kydex will be cool to the touch. It won't be cold, but it won't burn your hands. You do need to make sure that it cools down enough so that it doesn't deform when you take it off of your blade. So it is a little bit hard to see when you're looking at this on camera, but when you're looking at it in person, you'll actually be able to see the imprint of the blade in there. Uh, so now we can make our rough cuts to remove more plastic. We're not going right up to the blade because again, uh, we'll, we'll end up sanding some of that off, but we can at least get a large chunk of it off so that it saves us a little bit of time. Also be aware when you're doing this, make sure that you leave plenty of room around the blade to be able to put your eyelets. If you decide to cut too close to the blade, then now you no longer have room for eyelets and then you get to throw your plastic away and start over. This is a place where power tools are nice. But again, not absolutely necessary. I mean, you could use a hacksaw for that. Uh, you, could, uh, you could score uh, each side of the kydex and break it just like we did before. So now that we got it roughed out, we're gonna hold our tech lock on in roughly the spot that we want it. And we're gonna go ahead and mark where our holes are gonna be so that we got them in the right spot so that we can mount it later. Now, since we're using a tech lock, the other beauty about the tech lock, obviously those holes are gonna stay the same distance apart the whole time. So if you don't wanna use a tape measure to measure the distance between your holes, you can just use that tech lock and that way each of your holes are evenly spaced or at least very closely evenly spaced. going to drill our holes. In this case we're using a drill KYDRL8 because we're going to be using number eight eyelets. At 
and this drill is specifically made for punching right through that kydex. It's got a nice point to it so that it doesn't bounce around on your plastic. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the eyelet in. So once we put our eyelet in, we're gonna turn it over so that the finished side is already on the bottom die. And then we're gonna roll it from the top. But we want that initial finish side on the front or the outside. So in this case, we're basically making a right-handed sheet because the factory roll is always gonna be the better roll. In this case here, we're using the Master Series Press and Master Series dies. We also offer these in hand setters uh, and a journeyman die uh, if you don't have the Master Series. Now for the next part, we're gonna take it over and we're just gonna start sanding and smoothing to get it to the final shape that we want. Now, keep in mind, plastic is pretty soft, so this is gonna go really fast, so be careful and use extremely light pressure when you do this. If you push down on it, you will chew right through that plastic all the way to your eyelids. And all we gotta do is polish it out, if you so desire. Some people really like the challenge of getting the edges to a mirror finish. That is purely a matter of your preference, but it can certainly be done. And so a knife, when it goes in, um, you, you're, what we're getting here basically is our retention is just about where our handles go right into the edge of the sheath. Um, a gun, you almost always hear an audible click when it goes in on a knife sheath because it's more of just a, a pressure, it's a friction thing holding it in. You may not always get that click and that's okay. You just wanna make sure if you hold it upside down and shake it a little bit, not crazy shake it, but shake it a little bit, just make sure it doesn't fall out. And then now we're simply going to put our tech lock in. So here we're just using uh, some TLMABs. Uh, we're using some slots, what we would call this, it's a slotted post. Uh, and then a EPDM washer in between the tech lock and the sheath and then a screw of your choice. And then just snug those down. Once you get these exactly where you want them and you get everything adjusted the way that you want to, we do recommend that you take the screws out, put some Vibratite on them and put them back in. Uh, when you use the uh, Vibratite, we recommend the kind that uh, helps with vibration so that it doesn't vibrate loose, but the kind that you can take loose if you need to. So now you can see we have the finished sheet, uh, easy to carry your combat survivor on your side. Making a knife sheath is just that easy. Certainly hope you've enjoyed making the foldover sheath for the Combat Survivor today. If you weren't able to make it with us, you can make one of your own. All you have to do is click the link right here and it will take you directly to our website. Also remember that even though we made this today with Desert Fox, we have hundreds of options that you can use to make it in whatever color or pattern you would like. Also, if you did enjoy this video, please take the time to click the subscribe button as well as click the notification button to be notified of all of our weekly videos as they come out. And as always, thanks again for stopping by.